everyone, hope we are doing well. We're here to discuss homegrown players at West Ham currently and what the summer looks like. We've already recorded what is a little bit of a part one to this video, so please do go check it out. It's on the forum channel. You have to really watch it in order, but it might help you watch that one first and foremost. The link is in the description below, but if you make it to the end of this video, it'll be on your screen then as well. At the start of the international break, we said, excuse me, can we have some suggestions for video topics? And Andy Phipps got in contact with us, Gonzo. And Andy said, hello, Gio, Gonzo and co. It looks like West Ham will be losing Aaron Creswell, Divine Mubama, Ben Johnson and Flynn Downs this summer, leaving only James Ward Prowse, Mikael Antonio, Jack Bowen and Danny Ings as our only homegrown players. Having also sold Connor Coventry in January, how many homegrown players do we need to sign in this summer? And who would be on your realistic British players shopping list? I hope this one is a fun one for you guys and not cause too much of a headache. We'd love to hear both of your answers. Andy P. Thank you very much, Andy. Well, Gio, I think you better give us the um, the, the quota and exactly what we need to do, I think. Yeah, I'm going to get a bit geeky. This next minute might be boring. I, I like rules. Well, I say I like rules. I like knowing the rules. Um, this is what West Ham, that, that's not it. That's the home, that's our contract players from the previous video. Ignore this list. This is the list. So this is the homegrown players currently at West Ham United registered in the Premier League this season. So we've got Anang on there as well as Mikel Antonio, Jared Bowen. Adam Caswell, Danny Ings, Ben Johnson, and James Ward Prowse. Now, obviously, a few of these players' contracts is expiring. So, if we were to remove the players whose contracts are currently expiring this summer, this is what our list looks like heading into next season. We would have Mikhail Antonio, Jared Bowen, Flynn Downs, Danny Ings, and James Ward Prowse. So, that would give us five home-growing players. Now, there is a twist when it comes to the European competition, which we don't know if we're in or, or not next season. We'll cover that in a few minutes' time. But there's five home-growing players at the minute that's going to be involved next season. On the previous list, I didn't involve Calvin Phillips, for obvious reasons, because he's not registered to West Ham United. So, Gonzo, that's what we've got. We've got five players at the minute. You need eight. For every yeah. player you're missing, you have to give up a spot in your squad. So, you've got a 25-man squad. Eight has to be home-growing. You've yeah. only got seven homegrown, you're only like 24 players, so on and so forth. So that's yeah. what it looks like. Well, I, I've got to say, you know, the, the first, probably the first thing I'd be doing here, Gio, straight away would be to uh, to make sure Ben Johnson stays because obviously he's uh, now we don't know if we're in Europe yet. Obviously, it's, I know that that stuff about coming, it changes slightly. You've got academy based players to consider as well. He ticks both boxes. I mean, I, I cannot. He almost ticks every bloody box, and he's willing to stay. Um, it's not it's not just a homegrown quota either. He's if you are in Europe, he's very very useful to have. If you're not in Europe, he's useful to have in a squad because he can cover a number of positions. It means you can you don't have to carry a centre back and a right back, for instance. He can, he can do both, or a left back and a right back reserve. You might be able to cover both. So, so I think mean, that's the first thing I would do would be to um to bring him in. But uh, I'm going to go back to somebody that we were linked with in January. And, and somebody I really wanted us to, to bring in was, was my, my, my first choice. And that was uh, Roe from Norwich, who I thought was was a tremendous player, actually. Um, so he, he was certainly that somebody that I would want to go in and I, I would I would look to get um, almost straight away and, and go go for that quota almost immediately. How, how do you want to do this? Do you want to duck and dive and, and back and forth or what? Yeah, we'll just we'll, we'll just uh, we'll just wing it as always. You continue talking. Well, I I, I also I, this might be a little bit controversial, and mm. under normal circumstances, I would say it might be re unrealistic. But um, but Everton have been quite naughty boys. They've been on a naughty. Step. Oh no, this is unrealistic. But carry well, on. I, I think then. I think we should go and sign Bramthwaite or have a go. That's what I would be trying to do if they look like they're in a right pickle and they they may well Everton, as I understand it, next season have to sell. They might have to cash in on somebody, and I'd be going and having a look at him. Quite frankly, who did you think I was going to say? Well, I knew that's who you were right. to say, Jack oh. Bramthwaite. As soon as you said Everton, I thought here we go. I know exactly where he's going with this one. I actually thought. To be fair, I know you're going to agree with this now, but I think in order to... It's something we need to look at, and it's something... I think in a, a few years, if everything goes well with the academy, it might sort itself out eventually. Yeah, ideally, you want the likes yeah, of Divine sure. Bam. I, I know his contract's up, but Callum Marshall, Patrick Kelly, Lewis Orford, Georgia. You, you'd like to think that some of them will make it at West Ham. That would be going on the list. But at the minute, we've got five players, and that includes Danny Ings and Flynn Downs, who... There is, at best, doubts over their future at West Ham next season. The only three that are guaranteed to be here 
it's Mikel Antonio, Jared Bowen, and James Ward Powers. But even, I'd imagine they're all here regardless of manager, but the other yeah. two, I'm not too sure about. I do think we'd retain one of the keepers, though. I do think Trotter yeah. Nang would be retained and they would go onto that list as well because it just makes sense. It's a third choice keeper, it's an easy decision. We've got options on the contracts. All we have to do is just flick a button and it's it's done. He's he's now at West Ham. I think probably more likely to be a Nang than Trot, given that Trot's currently got a home over in Denmark and stuff. Um oh, no way. Or Norway, so I do. I do think I'm quite relaxed about the homegrown thing, but it's something that does need addressed, and this is where I think there's one or two obvious outstanding candidates. I think to come into the first team at West Ham, you know, Max Kilman's another one at Wolves, a left-sided centre. What do we need this summer? A left-sided centre back. You know, Max Kilman almost just screams out Wolves. There, there's a lot of clubs in trouble with PSR or FFP where they've got to be careful. They're not getting points deducted, but they've got to be careful. They're, they're going to find some are tough. Wolves are one of those. So yep. straight away, Max Kilman becomes a viable option. Everton, for anyone that wants to shop at Everton, become a viable option. So I think Max Kilman would be the first one at the top of my list. I still have a desire to see Ian Matson at West Ham. You know, it went sounds- on loan to Dortmund, home yep. growing. Could, would place Emerson long-term, short-term would put pressure on Emerson, can cover further up the pitch as well. Very versatile. I think that's another no-brainer for me to go, to go and try yeah. and get Ian Matson, who doesn't look like he's got a future at Chelsea. And Chelsea, another club under pressure to sell players. And the academy players are pure profit. So Matson is quite almost like a lucrative sale to them. So Kilman and Matson on that list. And the third player I'm going to throw in there, well, there's two. But it's to replace one player, and that is Lucas Paqueta. To replace Lucas Paqueta. I've also got... To, and they're both from Man City. No. Oh, well, mine are, but go on. I thought one of yours would have been from Nottingham Forest. Oh, yes. Morgan Gibbs White would be my favourite player yeah, to replace. Forest is also yeah. under pressure to raise £25 million before oh, okay. the 1st of June. Yeah. They're... I was going to have a cheeky swap, a double, a double swap plus some cash. Who's your... Who's well, your... you, you mentioned it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to, I don't want to piddle on your fireworks, quite frankly, because you, I didn't know what, when we were going to do the video about the, the, the cheeky person that got sold for lots of money to Manchester City. Well, we can do it now then. So one's Jack, Gre- oh, yeah. Jack Grealish. Who's yeah. the other one? Who's the other one you're thinking about? Grealish and McAtee. We'll have them. Yeah, I like McAtee a lot. I, I do like him a lot. He's, um... for, he's for you. If I was chairman, I'd be saying, there you go, Gio. <laughs> That one's for you. I'll be, I'll be doing a Tim Steiton um, and giving you that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, just, I, just, I, I love Jack Grealish as a player, but his wages are just ridiculous. I, I wouldn't want him at West Ham. I wouldn't want Grealish at West Ham. Would I want Grealish a footballer? Yes, but that financial package that he comes with is just oh, he's, he's on a lot of money City aren't going to give him away are they he's not going to be going cheap they paid 100 million for him they're going to want to get majority of that back um so that's why I'd be put off by that the, the McAtee one is, is 100% Morgan gives White take advantage of Nottingham Forest's yeah. situation there and, and I just feel like he doesn't want to, He's not he's not producing Jared Bowen numbers. Do you know what I mean? He's he's got a handful of goals and a handful of assists. He's not blowing the competition out of the water or anything like that. So I think it becomes quite viable. And the other player, he's a bit injury prone, but it's a bit of like a luxury, is Eze. Oh. One of them. I don't think you can have Gibbs White and Eze, by the way. I'm not saying this. No. This isn't FIFA for a football manager. I think if Paqueta went, one of those two players, I think, would be lesser than the fee we get for Lucas Paqueta, homegrown. And I think they would fit him well at West Ham. And it, I guess it depends on who the manager is a little bit. But yeah. we know Eze was the one David Moyes really mm-hmm. wanted. Um, just a bit injury prone. However... He's got that little bit of X factor that Lucas Paqueta has about him, where he can score a goal, get an assist out of nothing. And I would love Eze at West Ham. I really would. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. So many these are these are really really good ones. I'm glad you brought up Gibbs White though. Yes, I think that would uh, definitely. I, I, uh, yeah, whilst his numbers might not be all there, I, I think I don't think he's playing in a good team. Um, I think I know uh, he's been moved since then. I think when Cooper was out, I kept on seeing him out on the right, and I was thinking, what are you doing? Maybe you know other fans when they see West Ham and see Paquetta out there, they probably think the same on the left, and they think might say think the same thing but I loved him at Wolves um I, I thought he was a magnificent player when he's played but you know the under 21s I, ju I just think he's just a, an absolute top quality player and yeah yeah I mean I, I don't it's actually quite exciting if we were to go and do it I'd be excited by this would I want to lose Piquetta no but if he's going to go he's going to go if we were to go and go and get people like Matson and Jonathan Rowe and Morgan Gibbs White I'd be buzzing about that I'd be yeah. really looking forward to going and watch the team so I, I do think there's um I, 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 I guess it's just allow, allowing the fans to have, have to, to dream. And I just would hope that we are that well organised because it's a little bit of a, a dagger to the heart, actually, when you know the players that are going to be good and you go to see other clubs go out, going out and getting them. And I think it's one thing being beat into it, but it's quite another when you find out you haven't even entered the fray uh, to try and get involved in the bidding for them. But I guess, look, we've got a director of football now. I would... I would hope somebody at the club understands these rules. Uh, you know the rules. I hope someone at the club does. But the fiasco with Ibrahim Osman does not have me um, well, this, full, this of, full is, of confidence that anyone knows about what, anything. This is what frustrates me because we're always going to be borderline homegrown players just because yeah. of the way of football and how expensive it is to buy a homegrown player. Clubs like West Ham will always have 8 to 12 homegrown players. We're never... Half the squad is going to be non-homegrown because it's better value for money for shopping abroad yeah. and bringing them into the Premier League. So that that's always going to be the thing. And I just think what you, you, you want to do ideally is just bulletproof yourself so that your homegrown players are young and have longevity at your football club like Jared Bowie. You sign yes. Jared Bowie and go, that's it. That's one done for the next few years. I don't have yeah. to worry about that homegrown player. It's done now. So when you look at the list for next season... Mikhail Antonio will be here, but he's here for next season and possibly off summer 25. Yeah. Playing downs probably won't be. Ings and Ward Prowse kind of have to be because they're homegrown. Not because they're good enough, not because they want them to be here, but because they're homegrown. And I just think why, when you buy players that are homegrown, you're almost like committing to them regardless of ability value etc it's because they're homegrown you're almost shackled with them to some extent you, you're retaining them for admin reasons like we did with Connor Comtry he was at West Ham for as long as he was for admin reasons and it's not fair and it's just, it's just bonkers that we wouldn't do all we could to keep Ben Johnson because whether he's biggest fan or not doesn't really matter the fact is he's incredibly invaluable when it comes to this side of the the football and you might not like it i mean one subscriber even accused me of making up the home growing rule not long ago which is entertaining i guess he just told me to stop going on about it. i've made it all up i mean i don't know how he thinks football works but, but if you were I, gonna make it up you'd you'd make it i i would i would make it up that actually you had to have 20 homegrown players and it all needs to be 24 years old absolutely not 23, and, not 20, they need to be 24 Absolutely. And if you didn't adhere to it, you get sort of dropped into a vat of boiling syrup or something. If you're going to make up a story, you'd make it more interesting than your version, I think. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, we're going to end it, end it by getting really geeky. So that's the homegrown thing dealt with. Right. Here's the curve, Bob. If we're in European football, the homegrown rule changes a little bit. Your eight homegrown players get split in two. You need four, they call it locally trained players. And that is. Um, not your West Ham players. So that would be James Ward-Prowse, Flynn Downs, those trained at another English FA, they, yeah. uh, Mikhail Antonio, basically everyone on that list yeah. is locally. You also need four club trained players. Do you want to see who West Ham would have next season? If we're in European football next season, yeah. would you like to see who our, as it stands with the contract situation, would you like to see the list of players we would register? Are you going to show me a blank screen? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I didn't know. I didn't That's know you were going to... That's our four players. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, That's mate. Them. Sorry, I ruined your joke. No, Sorry, it's all right. It's funny. Sorry. It's funny. I mean, I think we, you'd have a nang on there probably, right? But that's it. <laughs> Divine Obama and Ben Johnson could be on there. But that's all. Um, that's it. So basically, we were in European football next season. We would only be able to have 21 players registered because we have to have four spaces for the lack of club 
trained players, which is just obscene, really. It's just yes, it's it's, it's wild, and we can't go rectify it. So, like Man City, Man City, if Man City were in this situation, they go, oh right, we're off down to Southampton. We're going to buy back Bazunu, the keeper. We're going to go try and get Romeo Lavia back. Sure. Douglas Luiz from Aston Villa. Yeah, yeah. We can yeah. go buy back our club trade. Yeah. We don't, we've got Josh Cullen. We, we don't even have anyone it. we can go and purchase to, to put back on that list. We've got Josh Cullen. Um, so this is where, it, like I said, in a few years, that might sort itself out because hopefully yeah. some of the younger players and people will be screaming, saying, what about Marshall and stuff like that? They, either they don't need registered because of yeah. their age or they're ineligible because of how long. You need to be at the club for three years and mm-hmm. they've only been there for two years or whatever yeah. they that's why Marshall and Kelly cannot play European football for West Ham this season. So, yeah, we wouldn't have anyone. I, I suspect we'd have a goalkeeper, but that would mean we'd have to have three spots yeah. unregistered because of our lack of club-trained players, which is just... Well, b- before before we go, actually, what it would not surprise me is if, if the club actually are aware of this and they're waiting to see what happens before they approach Ben Johnson. Uh, but if, and if I was him, oh, I, I would yeah. I, I, I would say no. I, I, how, how dare you? And actually, by the way, that fifty grand seventy. Yeah, I'm about to say that's what he would do. He'd, put, he'd go, well, I now know my my value's just gone through the roof now because we're in yeah. European football. I have a hundred grand a week, please, because yeah. it's going to cost you that, and then yeah. some to, to yeah. pay a fee and replace me. And then yeah. you can't replace me in yeah. terms of the club training thing. I'm irreplaceable. Yeah, I thought you got go, 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 You might have to go and buy Freddie Sears or something. Do you know what I mean? Um, because he got, he got he got released by Dagenham a couple of weeks ago. Well, okay, I think well, it was Dagenham. He's playing. Play. I've got nothing against Freddie Sears, by the way. But um, yeah. you know, just that, that, that it's it would highlight how few of our academy graduates are sort of you know playing at the top level. So I, I mean, it just. It just... Can we have Hardison Ashby back, please, Newcastle? <laughs> exactly. Leeds, what's <laughs> Sonny doing? Yeah, not, not, not playing. Um, but we'll just yeah. go back, hoover up all the youngsters that have left us recently. Go get Harrison Ashby, Sonny Perkins, yeah. and uh, Tony Martinez. Get them all back. The gang are getting back together. We need four. <laughs> we need four academy. Josh <laughs> Cullen, in you come. We need four academy players. Back, he's come. I just, I just don't want to be a good YouTube video. Drive, driving around, banging them all in the back of the van, um, and bring, bringing them back just in time for the UEFA quota. <laughs> Sign! Sign! <laughs> Why are you signing me? Do you see me fitting into nah admin? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Admin. Sign on the dotted pick your colour, actually. Sign on the dotted line. Yes, yeah, so stayed in. I don't want a fast winger. I want just anyone that's been at the that what? qualifies as club stream players. Stand, stand winger. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah I, I, absolutely. Where were you born? Basildon, really? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Hey, there you go. That's your homegrown players. Basically, it's not looking too rosy for the summer. And if we're in European football next season, well, you might get a, you might get a game. 